everyone, it's Kate from The Fold Line and I am back this week to talk all things sewing bee. First and foremost, if you have not seen the final, do not watch any further because I'm going to tell you loads of spoilers. So go watch the programme and then come back to us. Right, for those of us who watched it, wow, I cannot believe what a good final it was. And I can't believe how hard the tasks were. I don't know about you, but I thought that last week was pretty brutal. Um, first and foremost, a huge congratulations to Juliet, who I thought was the right person to win it. I thought her makes were absolutely incredible. Um, yeah, I was gunning for her from the start, so I'm really, really chuffed at her. And, um, yeah, it's amazing. Also, apparently she's the youngest person to ever win it. Who would have thought? Um, yeah, so that was really, yeah, really lovely. So, I'm here to talk all things patterns. Um, I've got some good options for the items that they made last night, and I'm going to kind of chat through everything. Can't believe this is the last one. Eight weeks went very, very quickly. I don't know about you guys, but I can't believe it's already over. And I was really excited, sorry I am going to get started, I was really excited that um, they're already taking, um, did you, if anyone watched right to the end it said they're taking um, applications for next year's programme so I think it will be back again which is very very exciting. So first and foremost, um, sorry I've got itchy, itchy face, um, first and foremost the, they made a double breasted um, men's waistcoat in, I think they had four hours, which, I mean, is absolutely brutal. I'd have fallen to pieces. But I found the perfect pattern. Um, it's a very traditional pattern. It, I, I mean, shape, it's classically, I think now, really the only time it's worn now in modern, modern, modern times is probably at weddings if someone's wearing a morning suit. Um, so the pattern I've got is the Butterick 6339. Um, it comes with quite a few variations. Um, it's got a single breasted version and a double breasted version, but it's also got that low swooping one that they made in the show. Um, it's got it's got all of the features. It's got the little darts at the side. It's got the well pockets. Um, so it's I mean it's almost a dead ringer for what they made in the show. Um, I thought this was really, yeah, a really good one. The other one, I popped in another one because I thought it might have inspired people to make a waistcoat for their other halves or for themselves. And um, mainly their other halves, I don't think there are that many men watching this. Um, but I've got another good pattern which I thought I'd pop in. It's, it's definitely more casual, but I thought, you know, it might be useful, might inspire you. It's the Belvedere Waistcoat from Thread Theory. Um, it's... Uh, it's got quite a lot of the features that are in the one that we saw. It's got kind of um, darts and it's got little welt pockets that you can put on, but it's single breasted and it's also got a nice little welt pocket up here, which I think looks really nice. It's just a little, I just thought I'd put it in because it's a bit more modern and a bit more everyday wear. So that would be a really nice sort of second option if you didn't want to go full throttle wedding. But I was thinking actually, if, if you were getting married, it would be really nice to make your other half his waistcoat if he was wearing tails. Um, it would be really nice actually to make him that to wear for his wedding anyway. That's another whole thing altogether. So next up we had the upcycle challenge. This challenge was where they were given neck curtains and they had to transform them into evening wear. Um, I really loved that they, so anyone who hasn't seen it, they they were hanging, they had all of these curtains like hanging up all over the studio and they had to kind of go and yank them down and take them. Um, quite, I thought quite varied in terms of what came out of this round of um, <laughs> makes. Um, they didn't have very long, it only has an hour and a half, which I mean actually now thinking about that, that's quite brutal. So I'm going to start with Leah, who made this kind of... Um, halter style long gown with a sort of fishtail frill and the frill at the bottom was all in the neck curtain and she had quite a big statement sort of bow sort of hanging over here um which I thought was also 
quite amazing but I'm going to talk through the um, sort of fishtail dress so I've got the McCall's 7569 um, this was pretty spot on actually for what she'd made it's got that sort of halter neck style the front does come down very low but obviously you could alter that if you wanted to um, it also comes with lots of different variations so you can have sleeves and all the rest of it so it was pretty good I thought this was a pretty good option if you really liked it it's got that big dramatic sort of fish tail yeah pretty pretty spot on um, so the next one I'm going to talk about is Juliet um, she did a kind of fitted it was quite fitted it had um, around the bodice and it had this sort of big dramatic bow that sort of came up over here um, and Leah had a big bow as well so I found a kind of big bowed pattern which I thought would work quite well for kind of for both of these um, Juliet's obviously flared out from the waist but I thought you know actually this would you could definitely use this so it's a bird it's from birdastar.com it's called large bow 08216 I'll pop links to everything um, so as you can see this has got like it's gone big on the bow um, really massive huge crazy bow but I thought this would work actually for Juliet's and for Leah's I think if you merge the two I think you could definitely kind of come up with something quite similar to this I love this it's kind of got that sort of 80s dynasty cocktail vibe to it which I love um, so yeah I thought that would work quite well for both of those Right, next we have got um, Ricardo's. To be honest, I really struggled with Ricardo's. It took, I looked for ages and ages. I couldn't find anything that like, I didn't do that well, I don't think, with Ricardo's. But what I have come up with is, it's kind of close. Um, I've got the penny dress from Colette. Um, I put that in because it's got a waistband, which his had. Um, it's got a placket down the front, which his had. It's got, obviously it's much more of a shirt collar shape and his had a much lower neckline, but it's got a gathered skirt, which his had. Um, yeah, that was probably the closest I could find. It was a bit of a challenge. I actually thought it was gonna be much easier than it was. I really thought there was a dress similar to his, but there really, really wasn't. So yeah, I didn't do that well on this one. Um, but yeah, the penny dress from Colette is lovely, so you know, I hope that's inspired someone maybe to make it. Um, right, so we're going to get on to the last bit. The last bit was evening gowns. This was a really lovely challenge. They got to make um, a pattern for a friend. So they had a friend of the, or family member who came in and they fitted the dress to them and it, the theme was evening wear. Um, I'm going to start with Leah, who did this incredible sort of yellow, floaty, gorgeous dress. This was actually really fantastic because they showed us a drawing of what she wanted to make and she had used a pattern and the pattern number was on there. So I know that this one is actually properly correct. This is the McCall's 6838. Um, You'll notice that actually it looks quite different um, to the finished dress. She obviously used this as her base and then built over it. Um, I did try and have a look for something that was much more similar to what she'd made, but I really couldn't find anything. So this was the base, boned, um, corset underneath, and then she's got it's got this sort of dropped hem. She um, or waterfall hem or whatever however you call it hers is actually she did have it slightly shorter at the front than and slightly longer at the back but she's then obviously draped this piece over the front and done lots of interesting things to it so this was definitely used as the base but obviously it doesn't look exactly perfect because she definitely did some amazing pattern cutting with it and I thought the dress was really beautiful and really elegant and it was quite Victoria Beckham I have to say I thought when I looked at it um yeah, really interesting, and she was working with such a difficult fabric, I think she did amazingly well. Right, next up we have got Ricardo's, which was, I think everyone will agree, it's pretty mad. Um, I looked and looked and looked, and I thought the best way to do his was actually to find the structure of, um, the sort of structure of the shape and work from that. I am not sure there are hundreds of people wanting to recreate his jellyfish look, but you know, you know. 
So, I've got two options. One of them is a vintage one, one of them is a modern one. Um, the vintage one is um, a McCall's 3609. I'll pop a link. Um, it's got that hooped skirt that he made. Um, it's got a corseted top and it was. I thought this was quite close. Um, the corset underneath has, um, the image you will see, it looks like she's got little straps, but that's sort of an undergarment that goes underneath the corset. So the actual silhouette of Ricardo's was, this was quite close. The other option I've got is the McCall's, um, oh, what is it? 7306. This is obviously quite kind of um, in the costume category, but it does have that hooped skirt. So I thought this was quite, and it does have a corset as well. And this one is much more readily available than the other one. So um, you can ignore all the bows and all the other bits if you don't want to make them. And you could definitely make the corset to top, the boning, the kind of hooped skirt, and then you could build on from that. So yes, I thought that was a good option. Last but not least, the winner, Juliet's freaking amazing beautiful dress with pockets i love that she took the time to put in pockets because we all love dresses with pockets and evening wear should have definitely have pockets um right so i've got two options um juliet self-drafted this so we obviously had to find something that was similar i think we've got two options if you merge them together it would actually be quite close to what she'd made um so the first one for the top half, I've got the Butterick 6019. Um, this has the classic sweetheart neckline that she had. Um, it's got that sort of folded bit, uh, kind of, there was like a kind of, almost like a bit that kind of folded over the top. Um, her neckline was asymmetric and this is not, but I definitely think you could use this as your base and then work from that. Um, there's another option in it to add a kind of slightly fuller skirt on this. It's more of a circle skirt. Um, but I think if you use that as your base to start off with, I think that's quite close. The back bit of it has got, um, it looks like it's got shearing. So you definitely would have to tweak it. But I think the front sort of panel would work really well. It's got that kind of interesting detail on it. The other dress I've got, which might, if you mix the two, I definitely think you could get there. It's the McCall's um, 6893. I'm gonna show you the line drawing because you can definitely see a bit more. It's got that sweetheart neckline, it's got a long version and it's got a kind of um, gathered skirt, which I know that Juliet's had pleats, but I think you could definitely use this as a base, use the gathering and make it into pleats rather than gathering it. Um, I think this would work quite well as an option. Um, I think, yeah, if you kind of, yeah, mi definitely if you mix the two, I think you could get there. I thought it was such a beautiful dress and the her model or her friend looks basically, I thought she looked like Jessica Rabbit, which let's be honest, most women dream of looking like. Um, it, yeah, I just thought, I think if you mix those two, I think you could definitely get there. So. Holy moly, I can't believe it. That is it, like, I can't believe it's over. Um, I hope you enjoyed our little series. Um, it was quite a lot of work, but it's been really fun sort of having a project to do each week and finding patterns. And yeah, I hope it sort of inspired you to make some new stuff, challenge yourself. I think that's what I learned from the, well, not learned, but I took away from the show is that actually I just need to challenge myself a little bit more and take on bigger projects because they're not scary you just have to kind of do it bit by bit so we will be back with another video very soon i think there's a new sewing pattern release that's coming this weekend so i will see you back on back on saturday and yes have a lovely week i hope you're not too sad it's all over but we will be back with lots more fun videos to keep you inspired and get you sewing <laughs>